Well, hello and welcome to Manitoba Moments. Today we will delve into the world of dance with one of the finest prima ballerinas in the world. Winner of the prestigious uh, Order of Canada, Companion of the Order of Canada, Governor General's Award, she has been called a national treasure. When she's on stage, it seems that time is suspended. Her grace, energy and passion seem to radiate from her like pure light. She is Evelyn Hart of the Royal Winnipeg Ballet. Evelyn, it is so great to see you. And I have to say, whenever I see you in person, I'm just amazed because you're so tiny in person. And on stage, you're like this larger-than-life person. Do a lot of people react to you that way? Yes, actually they do. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, I remember when I was a student um, and I'd done my very first sort of, sort of maybe featured role. And uh, I, I, ne I will never forget this. I remember... I walked out of, out of the theater and I was walking down the street and all of a sudden I heard this huffing and puffing, Miss Hart, Miss Hart, running after me and these people came running after me and they just wanted to tell me how much they'd enjoyed the performance and I had passed them in the theater. I just walked right by them and I wasn't thinking anything of it and uh, they looked at me and they said, well, we were looking for somebody much taller. So they apparently were looking up here to see, and I guess I just walked right in front of them. <laughs> and I had no idea. But then uh, in the years since, I realized that a lot of it has to do too with my proportions. I have been blessed with very long legs and long arms and long extremities. And, and I guess it's just that as you get older and your stage presence, which is a, just the gift that you're given, is this whole expansion and this understanding of taking a space and just allowing your soul to fill up the space. And that is, I can't take credit for that. That's just something that happens naturally. It's you know, that, that, that is so true. And, and, and you're right, whatever you call it, presence, a charisma, persona, it is a gift. It's something that is given to you, and you certainly have it. And the strength that you must have to have. Uh, the work that you do on stage is so as astoundingly difficult sometimes and must require so much energy. Strength would be a very important thing. You know, strength is, is, is important. I mean, as you get older as a dancer, you, you work also to find what I call the economy of movement or the efficiency. So it becomes much more of a science. So when you're younger, you're using a lot of muscle power. And when you're older, you're what I call them the inner drivers. You're, you're learning how to use <clears throat> the awareness of your body to do the movement with the least amount of muscular power. But when you talk about strength of being on stage, I would have to say that to be a, a, a dancer, to be an artist of any kind, requires strength of character much more than, the, the physical strength is one element. And that's actually a, a joyful part because that's kind of, when you're really dancing and you're dancing full out and you feel your sort of engines revving and you really, your muscles are working in perfect coordination, it's just a, a fantastic reward because you just feel great, you just feel energized. But it's the strength of character that really is required over the years to, to put up with the disappointments, to put up with the politics, to put up with the the day-to-day the -day grind, to put up with the fatigue, to put up with the traveling, um, to put up with the disappointments, for example, with reviews, uh, you know, the disappointments in your colleagues sometimes, not wanting to reach the same level that you do, um, disappointments in yourself are the big, is really the biggest one, is when you can't accomplish what you dream. I can certainly see that. Um, and, and you say reviews, my gosh, I can't imagine you ever having had a bad review. Oh, terrible. Really? Oh, I've had, I've had some that, of course, and they're the ones that, of course, that are singed in your brain, right? This, they're, oh. they're kind of like the tattooed there. and. Um, but really one that was so bad that sort of said that I gave a vague facsimile of a dancer when propped up on the point by a partner. What? Yeah, wasn't, that wasn't a pleasant one, but um, you realize that as you go, you learn to take, for every one negative one, there's probably 50 good ones. And as you get older, you, you step farther and farther and farther and farther back. And it really becomes much more about what it is you want to accomplish and how you feel that you've accomplished it with your public, with the people that come to see you. As you say, strength of character again comes into play. Mm -hmm. You become more confident in yourself and you're less likely to be affected by reviews. You're, or you're forced to really grow as a human being. There's no question. You have, there's no way to hide from it. You know, you, you start out as a, 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 a very young, I think very focused individual and as you go through all these ups and downs and the, the lessons that you learn by being an artist, you, you just have to 
you have to dig deeper and deeper and deeper and draw on the inner resources. And you, you learn not to count on the things on the externals. And I think that that's what eventually becomes this thing that goes out farther and farther and farther on the stage, is the fact that the, the farther you go in and the more you trust that sort of the gift that you've been given and the fact that you're, you're meant to be there regardless, and trusting that moment that's what I think people start to pick up on. And if you can come to that place of peace within yourself, then there's that radiance that hopefully comes over the footlights. Oh, that's, a, that's such an, a beautiful descriptor of, of, of what you have to come to terms with inside yourself. And I, I want to talk more about that. I also want to talk about where that spark first began for you, that passion for dance. We have to take a quick break, but we'll be back shortly. Evelyn Hart with her longtime former dance partner Rex Harrington. Evelyn, I, I want to talk a little bit about partnerships uh, and how important it is uh, to know that partner you dance with uh, to create what you do on stage. But first of all, I want to ask you about go back a little ways and tell me when did that that first passion for dance surface for you? Oh, it was like a lightning bolt. I remember it vividly, and I was talking about it the other day. I, I my mother allowed me to have a nap and stay up late because Romeo and Juliet with the National Ballet of Canada was going to be on television. I, I think it was 1966, somewhere around there. I was, I was 10. And I remember um, seeing this performance. And up until that point, I'd always, my first ambitions were to be a bride or a princess. <laughs> That was really realistic. <laughs> and then at one point I had a short time where I wanted to be a scientist, and then I wanted to be an actress. And that was really what I wanted to do. Well, when I saw Veronica, all of a sudden, it was amazing. It was beautiful costumes, it was music, and it was acting. And I thought, that's it, that's what I have to do. And the road to becoming a dancer from there was quite, if I look back on it now, it seemed to be just full of one pitfall after another. But if I really look at it, it was just phenomenal how out of the blue mm -hmm. I ended up dancing. And I, I said this to somebody else the other day, I still inside don't really feel like a ballerina. Like I'm still quite amazed that I'm actually, I actually do what I do. Oh. Because what I do is so unphysical in a way. I, I don't see dancing in a physical way. I do the movements, but it's never been about that. It's been always about what I, what I'm feeling mm -hmm. and how to express that. In a way, you've become an actor in a way, haven't you? Uh, yes, yes. I, I guess so. And I mean, those are the roles that I enjoy the most, yes. are the ones where I can develop a character. But I guess that that's interesting, is that coming to realize that, is that that's my whole approach. For example, now this year, I'm supposed to do Romeo and Juliet again. And of course, we always come to the whole issue that I usually outlive most of my partners. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily literally, but usually they've retired by the time I'm still going. And it's like I'm like the everybody bunny that keeps going and going and going and going. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, it just it's to find a partner that has the same inner world. And so taking a look at Rex, it's, it's not something that you can create. You can work very hard on the technical things to make sure that the, the dancing is smooth and you're together musically on the physical element. But the element that makes you a performer or a communicator or understanding the drama or able to be an actor, say to be Juliet, you cannot teach that. You just, you just know it, you feel it. And I was just performing with Rex in Ottawa and I, he drives me crazy uh, because you said that you're like an oh, old, old married couple, right? Oh, <laughs> because because it's just trying to get him to sort of just arrive at rehearsals or trying to <laughs> remember the dates of whatever it is or answer the phone. It's just on the physical side very difficult. But the thing is, the first minute you walk into the studio, it's like all of that just melts away, and you just you touch each other and you're one. And so you just I think that's what keeps you going through all the 
the, the differences in our personalities is knowing that when we actually get out there, there's nothing like it. And we kind of laughed because we were out there performing and both of us were kind of falling over each other, but over ourselves because we couldn't stand up because we realized that we were just so busy looking at each other. <laughs> and, and you know, everything else had flown away and we, we weren't concentrating on the dancing. We were just looking at each other. <laughs> and I, I thought that was just me, but he came off stage and said, sorry, it's sort of the same thing that happened wow. to me. Wow. <laughs> to be able to communicate like that and uh, uh, create this art on stage uh, by just knowing each other, mm -hmm. knowing how you'll react together and the space around you just comes alive. It's a beautiful thing to watch. Mm -hmm. You talked about how, well, you're so dedicated and is it possible to have a life outside dance when you are like you, like Evelyn Hart? You know, I consider that my life at the moment always is and still has and probably always will be, will be dance. That is my life. So my life outside of dance is still dance in the sense that I am a dancer, I'm an artist, that's who I am. Um, when you say life outside, it, I just look at that and I say don't differentiate my life outside because I think being an artist is living and that's the way that you choose to live so of course everything that I do I choose to support the actual experience of being a dancer so I always find that an odd thing when people say oh I don't have a life well maybe not in terms of someone else's life you don't have a life. You don't have a life in terms of someone, say, differentiating their work from nine to five and then mm -hmm. saying going to concerts or going to the cottage on the weekend. But you can still do all of those things. It's mm -hmm. just maybe not to the same degree or, or nor with the same routine. So um, does, can Evelyn, uh, does Evelyn Hart hang out at the movie theater sometimes? I or go to movies when I, when I have time. I yeah. love movies yeah. and, and I love going for dinner with friends and I love having dinner parties and I love, you know, reading good books. Yeah. and. You know, I don't, I don't indulge in sort of hobbies such as sort of water skiing or, or cliff diving or, <laughs> or hand gliding or things like that. That hasn't, I haven't had time for those mm -hmm. kinds of hobbies. Mm -hmm. But I haven't ever felt mm -hmm. a lack. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the, the difficulty for me is when I don't work. Then I realize that I have to fill my life up with something else. And that sometimes is where the difficulty is because I haven't been able to develop hobbies or things like that because I have been so busy. But I think that's also a, a, an indication of the fact that when you really are, as an artist, challenged mm -hmm. and working and, and fulfilled, it's, it, you don't, it is your life. You don't need to fill it up with anything else. Exactly, exactly. Because it's so full. It's a painful life, though, isn't it? I mean, even today, you've got a sore foot, and mm -hmm. you're going to have to dance in a couple of days. Oh, oh dance tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> how do you do that? Tomorrow I mean, morning, how, actually. How do you do that? I hear that, that ba ballet dancers are, are the biggest buyers of Advil because they have to be performing even when they're in pain. Yes. Well, yes. I think we are. We should be sponsored by Advil, <laughs> actually. Um, <gasps> we always used to laugh. And, uh, we sometimes take out our Advil thing saying, lunch. <laughs> anybody, or anybody, anybody want gum? Uh, because it is, it's just part of the profession. But you learn how to handle it. I mean, I have an infected toe at the moment, which is probably the worst pain you could have. Mm. But I'm, I'm just know that if, if it really doesn't settle down by tomorrow, I'll ask the, the company doctor to come and inject it so that it freezes it. Wow. It's not something serious. The, the worst thing is really when you have injury, and that, that is painful on a physical level, but also on a mental level, because of course it all of a sudden you're extracted from the life that you're used to and injury is a big and major part it's the same as musicians when they get injured mm -hmm. or football players or hockey players that when all of a sudden suddenly and it's it's the same thing as maybe having a, an instant loss where uh, someone you love is in a car accident and all of a sudden bam your world changes so if it's an injury that that threatens your career that's completely different. It's one thing when you're in it and you make the choice. It's still painful, but at least you're having a little bit of an option. Exactly. So that that's another element to the career that you you just you you have to learn. Mm -hmm. you, it's it's I would imagine it'd be the same thing in broadcasting. You have to learn with the difficulties and the, what we call the occupational hazards of the job. Absolutely. Every job has it. Mm -hmm. What are some of the frustrations? Some of the, you mentioned some of the frustrations with your work, but um, what do you think are some of the, the things you like least about what you do? Everybody has things they like least. Uh, the things that, I, I mean, the, as far as the dancing goes, I can honestly say there is never a moment that I dislike it. I mean, sometimes, for example, you might have a teacher that you don't particularly find that you're able mm -hmm. to accomplish your most 
your, your, your best work with, and that's sometimes frustrating. But I think the thing that I like the least is, is the, I was going to say the business or the politics of it, but I don't even really think it's so much that. I think what I really dislike the most is the limitations that other people try to put upon you as an artist in order to fit you into a box. And that's not necessarily within your own company. That can be within the whole world of ballet. Mm -hmm. You know, That can be within the public world. That can be the media. What that, kinds of limitations do you mean in the world of dance? I mean, well, for, for example, when I was younger, mm -hmm. it was the fact that you know, you come in and you have a different idea, say, about a role. And say you come up against a choreographer who absolutely doesn't want to even hear your creativity mm -hmm. or work with you. You'll come up, say, for example, with a, a partner who, who you'll spend more time discussing why it can't be done than working on how to make it different. Um, when you get to this point in my career, you're dealing with a lot of people having very strict expectations about how you'll finish dancing. Uh, how long you'll dance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Instead of being able to look at the situation creatively and say, "Okay, you know, this is an open book," mm -hmm. and it's just the way that, that I, f my philosophy towards my life, that I, I would like to be able to create each day from the stirrings of my heart rather than from the stirrings of a, of a society and what they expect, and to sort of open people's minds and eyes and hearts to possibilities. That's what we are as artists. We live in the picture frame, a lot of us in this world, don't we? Mm -hmm. and not a, I agree with you, Evelyn. And not enough people look outside the box. It creates a tremendous amount of stress, inwardly and outwardly, mm -hmm. because instead of, I mean, there, yes, of course, we have to live within a certain confines and find the best way for both the box and yourself. Mm -hmm. But it's just trying to, I think, um, find a way of looking beyond. I was saying, you know, we all, we, we've bought into these ideas, why? Mm. And can't we look beyond? And it's, it's a little bit like wanting to go into space, how but, just, but just right here on Earth, yeah, you know? Yeah, exactly. Now, but how do you handle it then when somebody says to you, well, you know, how long do you want to continue dancing? How long is feasible? What do you, how, do you, how do you respond? Um, usually I try to express myself in these terms and saying I don't know because mm -hmm. it'll all depend I have to take it day by day mm -hmm. because I want to see I want to be given the, the opportunity to see what will come because I myself don't even know mm -hmm. but if I myself limit myself then there's no possibility and you know it's also accepting the real re realization in the realistic mm -hmm. confines, you know, and, and looking at it and saying, you know, I trust you to, tell, to help me make this decision. Mm -hmm. I trust you to sort of be a, a good uh, mirror mm -hmm. and really just take it day by day. Day by day. You know? I, I want to talk with you about some of the uh, interesting things as well that have happened on stage, oh. behind the scenes, things that nobody else ever really sees. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Now, what you see on stage when you see a ballet, uh, when you see Evelyn Hart, it's perfection. But I'm curious to know, what goes on sometimes that we don't see that is catastrophic sometimes? You must have to do some covering up sometimes, surely. There are some bad moments. Well, you know, I've, I've never had major, major disasters, uh, but I've had some pretty funny things. Like, what, I just remember Rex and I, most, most of the time it's with Rex, actually. <laughs> <laughs> one, one of the times I, I was doing uh, lunch back in Swan Lake and my headpiece hooked onto the back of my tutu oh. and I thought, oh no, I'm going to be decapitated. And sure enough, as I came up to go past, I could, my whole headpiece you know, started falling off my head like this. Oh, no. So I get down there. Thank heavens the tutu let released in, in enough time. Otherwise, it would have been stuck on my tutu. Oh. Now, that would have been a real disaster. <laughs> but. I was going around in a promenade, of course, trying like with a football helmet, trying to put this thing back on, and I got it on just in time to come up like this. So of course the two of us started to giggle, and of course we couldn't stop giggling, and we, we were fine. We kind of held it together until we hit the wings, and then both of us just went. Wah! 
<laughs> we just <laughs> lost it, just completely lost it. So we were laughing so hard that, of course, my <laughs> my eyes were watering and my eyelash completely like was sticking up straight. Like this. <laughs> so I came out to do my solo with one eyelash sticking straight up, and I thought, oh my gosh, and it was just one of those performances where it's just those little kinds of things just kept going wrong. Oh, you know? that's hilarious. No, that is hilarious. There was one time that that um, <laughs> oh yeah, that one time with with Rex and I that we we finished in Giselle and we were doing that 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 we finished that <coughs> that we were supposed to finish sitting on his knee, and of course he hadn't practiced it, of course. And of course he swizzled and he lost his balance. And the whole company is like, they're on their knees like this, <laughs> looking towards the center. The whole pose, the whole stage is toward us in the center. And I literally was on top of him, <laughs> flat like this. And I thought, oh great, there we are in the middle doing some rather rude things. Oh, I mean, that's hilarious. I just, I mean, I just thought, and I could feel it. It sort of happened in slow motion. He oh. lost his balance, I was going, oh. Evelyn, thank you for giving me this wonderful chocolate. I, I just, I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs>